We're skipping chapter 10, and chapter 11 is going to be a relatively easy chapter. This chapter, we're talking about unemployment and labor force participation. We're going to define unemployment, talk about the three types of unemployment, and talk about what determines whether people participate or not in uh, economic activity. So, I'm sure you all know examples of unemployment. Someone loses their job, uh, someone retires, uh, sorry, someone loses their job, uh, someone wants to find work but can't find someone that matches them in their, uh, in the right field or um, in the town they want to live in. But what is unemployment? Is someone who's retired unemployed? Is someone who's uh, in prison unemployed? Is a child unemployed? We're going to define what unemployment is and different types of it. But before we even get started, take a look at the history of the world. We're going to go back all the way, back in time to the time of the Luddites, 1800s. Perhaps you've heard of Luddites. Luddites uh, are often used as a a shorthand way today of saying anti-change against new economic activity. But originally, the Luddites were groups of textile workers, people who with their hands would make fabrics and things. And what they were known for was radically protesting, destroying machinery and attacking businesses, destroying the machinery that could be used to make textiles like fabrics. You see, these machines were much more effective than uh, hand textile makers. And so these workers decided that what they wanted to do was destroy the machinery that was going to come to replace them. Perhaps this sounds familiar to you. There have been, uh, what is the other famous example of this? You have perhaps all heard the song, John Henry, a steel driving man. Uh, once upon a time, so the story goes, people were used to uh, do railroad work on their own. Steel driving was a machine used for punching holes in rock, or it was, a, it was an activity of punching holes in rock, but we built a machine that was better at punching holes in rock than man. And so, no one could beat the machine except for John Henry. He beat it and died. And then there were only the machines. The Luddites, of course, also lost. Today, almost all of our fabrics and textiles are made by machine. Hand-making textiles is nearly unheard of. Unemployment throughout history has been everywhere. Do you see too many people shoeing horses today? Digging latrines? Building VHS machines? Working at Blockbuster? Working at Sears? Working in steel mills? As the economy changes, people who have skills might lose their jobs. But other jobs open up. Today you can get a career in nuclear engineering and work in a nuclear plant. You can be involved in renewable energy generation. So just as some jobs disappear and are replaced, new jobs also emerge. So let's talk about the different types of ways humans can be involved in an economy. Working from the bottom of this graph upwards, we're going to define how the entire US population fits into employment categories. Let's define this. This is, uh, so I say that because this is the broadest category, and the farther you go up here, the more specific it gets. Let's start with building up these two, uh, defining them. We'll define this, this, and finally reach back to our starting point of the whole U.S. population. Someone who is unemployed 
is not just someone who's not working. To be unemployed, there are two important details. First, you need to not have a job. And second, you need to be looking to get one. An unemployed person is an adult without a job trying to find a job. The unemployment rate is the percentage of the labor force without a job. The labor force is everyone who is employed or unemployed. So do the labor force is everyone employed or unemployed. The percentage of the labor force who is unemployed, the number of people in this category versus the number of people in this whole category, is the unemployment rate. In this example, the unemployment rate is two out of six. Four people are employed, two people are unemployed. That means the labor force is six people. How many of those six are unemployed? Two. So our labor force uh, unemployment rate is two out of six. To be unemployed, you must be willing and able to work, but unable to find a job. You also must be an adult over 16. You cannot be in prison. You must not be in the military. Someone is only unemployed if they are a non-institutionalized civilian adult looking for work. Non-institutionalized civilian adult looking for work. Adult, non-institutionalized civilian, without a job, looking for work. To calculate the unemployment rate, we define the number of those unemployed by the labor force the number of unemployed plus the number of employed. In the United States, there were 9.8 million people unemployed in April of 2014 and 145.7 million employed. What's our labor force then? 9.8 plus 145.7 is 155.5. Thus, our unemployment rate was 9.8 divided by 155.5 or 6.3%. The labor force participation rate takes us all the way back here. The labor force participation rate is the number of people who are adults and are in the labor force. Again, to be in the labor force means you have to be an adult, non-institutionalized civilian who either is working or wants to work but cannot find a job. So these six people are in the labor force. But out of the entire adult population, how many are in the labor force? For instance, maybe you are an adult, non-institutionalized civilian, but you don't work. Maybe you're a homemaker and your partner works instead of you. Maybe you're rich, and so you don't have to work. In all of those cases, you are not unemployed and not employed. You are not in the labor force. Now, unemployment is not usually a good thing. Most people who are unemployed, that is, adults looking for work, are not happy with that situation. Uh, it means they have less money, usually means they have lower health, and especially mentally is usually associated with higher rates of depression and suicide. Unemployment also means the economy isn't working well either, because it means there are people who want to work but cannot find jobs. That means the economy isn't functioning very well either. So the unemployment rate is a sign whether the economy is doing well or badly. The higher the unemployment rate, the worse the economy is doing, but it is not perfect. If you see numbers saying what the unemployment rate is, 
Many economists will say, eh, hold on, you have to understand the picture better. For instance, unemployment does not include discouraged workers or underemployed workers. Discouraged workers are workers who have given up looking for work but would still like a job. For instance, imagine you for five years tried to get a job and couldn't. Maybe at the end of the day, you just stop trying to find work. You're a discouraged worker, not unemployed anymore, because you're not trying to find a job. It's very hard to measure these folks because, of course, they're off the radar of everyone. But we usually measure them over in U.S. Census and the Bureau, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, I believe, BLS. Uh, by looking at people who looked for a job in the last year, but not in the last month. So that's a sign that maybe you are discouraged because you needed a job a year ago and you don't have one, but you haven't looked. We find that actually the number of discouraged workers in the economy is fairly low compared to the number of people unemployed. One interesting thing to note here is that since the 2008 recession, the number of discouraged workers has actually jumped up. Normally, it is tracked very closely against the unemployment rate. But now, the number of discouraged workers relative to the unemployment rate has increased significantly. To me, this is somewhat of a worrying sign. It means that a lot of people lost their jobs in 2008 and have not been able to find anything that they were a match for and so have stopped searching. Another BLS measure is the underemployment rate. Imagine someone has four PhDs in physics, mathematics, chemistry, and bio, uh, biology. Then imagine you meet this person and they are working at a Kroger bagging groceries. Would you say, hmm, this seems problematic? Couldn't they be doing something at, like the intersection of biology and chemistry and physics? That person would be considered under would be considered underemployed. Uh, imagine also that someone is working currently. Uh, I remember what the number is, 20 hours a week. And they would like to have a full-time job, but they cannot get one. So they are working, but they don't have the job they want. They're working part-time instead of full-time or they're working under their skill set. That person is underemployed, and that's also a bad sign for the economy because you have people who aren't being put to their greatest potential use. So this means that unemployment as a measure on its own often misses the picture for where an economy is actually at. But it's very difficult to measure because how do you know whether uh, that guy who's working at Kroger bagging groceries with four PhDs is there because he can't get a better job or is there because he got burned out working at Harvard and preferred to bag groceries? Uh, currently in the US, our best guess for underemployment is a, a bit below 